This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Accruals and prepayments. Now, I mentioned these in an earlier chapter, very briefly, but now we're looking in a little bit more detail about what accruals and prepayments are uh, and how we actually deal with them in the um, accounting records. Uh, and to explain both, uh, let's first of all deal with prepayments, and I'll explain it by way of example. So, can you turn straight to page 32, where there's an example, example 1, which is a, uh, an example on prepayments. So, have a read with me, uh, and then let's work through it. Karen started business on the 1st of January 2000. During the year, to 31st December 2000, she made the following payments for insurance. First of all, on the 5th of January, she paid $800, and that was for the six months to the 30th of June. On the 15th of June, she paid $2,000, and that was for the 12 months to the 30th of June 2001. So what's happening, as is usually the case with insurance, is she's paying it in advance. At the beginning of the period, she's paying the insurance, firstly for the uh, six months, because she'd only just started business, but from then on, presumably, she's having to pay a 12-month insurance bill at but she's paying it in advance. She's paying it at the beginning of the period. Um, now, before we actually look at what's required in the question, writing up the tier accounts, etc., let's just decide what are expenses for this year. The expense for her first year in business, which is for the year ended, 31st December 2000. Well, what we want to know is what the actual expense was, what the cost was for the year, forget for the moment how much she's actually paid. What I mean is this, the first invoice there is for the first six months. So for the first six months, from the 1st of January 2000 to the 30th of June, uh, for that period the invoice is 800. So that's the cost for the first six months. What about the second six months, from the 1st of July to the 31st December? Well, that's part of that second invoice. The second invoice is for 12 months to the 30th of June 2001. So surely the actual cost for the period we're looking at for these six months is going to be 6 twelfths of the total invoice of 2000, which is 1000. So the total expense is 1800. That's the expense of the year, and that's the amount we want to appear in the income statement. Now, of course, she's actually paid more than that. During this year, she's paid 2800. But the reason is that surely she's effectively overpaid um, in that during this year, to December 2000, she's already paid the first six months of next year. Well, that amount overpaid is known as the prepayment. And again, the amount she's overpaid, we're doing the year end to December 2000, so she's overpaid from the 1st of January 2001 to the 30th of June, which again is half of that invoice of 2000. She's overpaid 1000. Now we call that the prepayment. Um, and surely, in theory, if she were to close down at 31st December, then the insurance company would have to repay her that overpayment. Now, of course, they're not going to repay it because she's not going to close down. But that 1,000 is effectively like a receivable at the end of December. Now, we don't call it a receivable. We call it prepayment. 
but it'll appear on the balance sheet just like a receivable uh, under the heading current assets so that's what should happen in the income statement will be the total expense for the year and in the balance sheet will be the amount of that overpayment all right well that's what we want to um, to end up with let's now look how the tier accounts would appear now uh, part A says write up the tier account for insurance well let's do it let's play bookkeeper now only an extract here because obviously there will be lots of other transactions we don't know about but as far as insurance is concerned what happens well on the 5th of January we pay 800 and of course when we ever we pay, make a payment credit cash debit insurance 6 months later on the 15th of June we pay another 2000 well again every time we make a payment credit cash debit insurance 2000 now the fact we've overpaid for the moment is irrelevant the bookkeeper's job is to record every payment and those two payments were both made this year at the end of the year we strike a balance so the balance on the account is 2800 and if we were doing a trial balance that would appear in our list and that's part B in fact we've started to close off the account however when we've done that what do we do we go through each account in turn and if it's an income statement item we move the amount to the income statement if it's a balance sheet item we leave the balance there but of course here we've got a little problem because insurance of course is an expense it will appear on the income statement but the expense isn't the full 2800 we already know that part of the amount we paid was effectively an overpayment and so what we do is this we calculate the prepayment now I won't waste time here doing all the workings we did it earlier but the prepayment we looked back to the last invoice the 2000 we found that half of it was for next year and so the prepayment was half of the 2000 it was a thousand having calculated the amount we make this entry we say okay of that 2800 we've paid 1000 was overpaid effectively we take it out we credit the insurance account with a thousand we open a new account called a prepayments account we debit it with the thousand overpaid and we do that credit insurance to reduce the expense for this year debit prepayments because it will give us a debit balance an asset for the balance sheet so credit insurance debit prepayments and now it's beautiful uh, the insurance account the amount remaining will move to the income statement so the missing figure is 1800 credit insurance debit the income statement and if you look back to the previous chapter in the income statement T account we debited uh, with every expense so here debit 1800 this year's expense for insurance prepayments well that thousand is the amount of the overpayment and of course that will appear in the balance sheet or statement of financial position um, it'll appear as an asset under the heading current assets and there we are I won't do part C show extracts from income statement and statement of financial position we'd effectively done that
up above. In the income statement, an expense of 1800 In the balance sheet or statement of financial position, a current asset of 1000 However, before we leave prepayments, we do need I do need to show you one more bit. That example one was Karen's first year of business, and we've now finished it. But to show you the complete picture, we really I really need to look at what happens in the second year. So, can you jump in the notes? Ignore example two for the moment. I'll come back to that in the next section. But can you go straight to example three? on page 35. And example 3, we'll read through the whole thing in a moment, but it's talking about the following year, the year to December 2001. We've just written up the year to 2000. During the following year, remember she'd already paid up to the end of June, but on the 12th of June 2001, then she has to pay for the next 12 months 2,400. And so, we're going to write up the books for the second year. Uh, now then, although we'd got the T accounts for example 1, to avoid any confusion, let's open them up again. This is example 3, remember. So. At the end of the first year, we had an insurance account. Um, and if you look back, we finished the year with zero balance. We debited with the amount we'd paid, but then we'd credited the prepayment, we'd credited the remainder, uh, and debited the income statement. But the insurance account, we'd finished with zero balance. However, we'd also opened a prepayments account. And at the end of last year, there was a balance left on the account of a thousand. At the end of the year, we'd overpaid a thousand. Effectively a receivable, a prepayment for the balance sheet. So that's how we'd finished last year. Well, again, we're going to write up the books of this year, but before we even look to see what happened, the first thing we must do is, because we're now in the year 2001, of course, that thousand balance we'd left at the end of last year, I've said several times, at the end of last year we had overpaid, but surely that thousand is the first bit of this year's expense. That is the expense for the first 12 months. And so when we move into the new year, it's, it's no longer an overpayment. And so the first thing we do is effectively reverse that entry. We say it's no longer an overpayment, we credit prepayments, and we debit the insurance account. An easy entry, but there's the first thing we do, and uh, automatically, surely, we've now got in insurance the expense for the first six months of this year, even though, obviously, it was paid last year. Now we can play at being bookkeeper. Uh, what does the bookkeeper do? Well, during the year, we made one payment, 2400 The double entry, credit cash, debit insurance... 2,400, and the bookkeeper's finished. That's all the bookkeeper did. So at the end of the year, we can take a balance. Incidentally, um, in exams, when you're doing your workings, there's no need to actually take a balance here, but strictly in real life we would. We have a balance of 3,400. We want to close off the accounts. Well, insurance, of course, goes to the income statement. But we want, in the income statement, the expense for this year 
we need to check have we overpaid well of course we have if you look back to the last invoice it was for 2400 but that was sit for 12 months to the 30th of June 2002 so calculate the prepayment the overpayment is the first six months of next year it's uh, we, our, our accounts go up to December 2001 we've overpaid from the 1st of January 2002 to the 30th of June which of course is six months or half of that bill of 2400 so the overpayment is 1200 and let's record it uh, in exactly the same way as last time 1200 is what we've overpaid. Take it out of the expense account, credit insurance. Debit the prepayments account, the overpayment. It's that one entry at the end of the year. Now we can finish off uh, the remainder of the um, insurance, the missing figure which is 2200 we can check in a moment but automatically that's the expense for this year credit insurance debit the income statement and we finish with that T account the zero balance we could carry on with next year on the prepayments account there's a balance of 1200 We know what it is, that's the amount we've overpaid, we'd worked out below. That will appear in the balance sheet or statement of financial position as a current asset. And so we leave the balance there. And that's it. Um, we can quickly check, in the exam be confident, don't waste time. But the expense for the year of 2200 Surely the first six months was the amount we'd overpaid last year. It was half of last year's bill, which was the thousand. The second six months, it was half of this year's bill. This year we'd paid two four. Half of it was this year. And so the total expense, 2,200. Now, in the exam, it depends what they want. If all they were asked for was what's the expense, it's up to you. If you find it easier doing a T account, fine. On the other hand, do a little statement, fine. If all they want is the expense, then, of course, it doesn't matter how you get it in your workings. So do be clear why it's 2-2. Two, two. At the same time, make sure you are happy what's in the T account because in various ways they can actually test you on the T accounts. However, that's prepayments. Have a break. Um, in the second part of this chapter, we'll look at accruals, where you'll see it's effectively the same logic, the same sort of entry. <laughs>